Hello, my sewing friends. This is Friday Sews. Woohoo! I'm Jen, and this is my sewing room. And uh, you see this magnificent machine right there? Well, let me tell you a little secret. It doesn't make you sew any better. It doesn't make you a better seamstress, sewist, sewer. Mm -mm. Nope. You're the same level sewer that you were when you got the machine. And I can testify because I have been using my seam ripper a lot lately. And while I am very um, kind of fly by the seat of my pants with most of the things in my life, sewing is not one of those things. I like precision and it drives me bananas because it takes so much brain work to do it. And I just want to that's yeah, fine. I can never just let it go and let it be fine. Hmm. So yeah, it's been kind of same old, same old around here, except with a new fancy machine. <laughs> that part's kind of nice. So let me tell you what I worked on this week. Uh, I finished up my striped dress. This is McCall's 7538. It's from 2017. I made the sleeveless version and this is a, I think it's a poly cotton uh, or a cotton rayon. I, it feels like natural fibers. It does not feel like polyester. Uh, and I think it's a knit. And I think it was from a Walmart bundle. To be honest, I, I'm pretty sure it was. Maybe three yards for $8. I'm not quite sure, but I have a feeling. So I love this dress. My only thing about this dress is that it feels like I should be wearing a slip just to have it give it something smooth to like slide over, you know, how we are with our bodies. It's like the bumps and the bulges and the age and yeah, let's just cover it all up. Make everything look very sleek and also very slippery slidey. I, I like it when clothes do that on my body. But I gotta tell you, I love the way this fits. Even though, I mean, I have to be conscious about holding my tummy in and that kind of thing, but you know what? You should enjoy the things that you make. You should love wearing them. And I really like wearing this. So that's a win. New look 6894 was, it is a little vest that I made. I made View D, which has a cotton eyelet trim around the neckline and down the front. I made it from this cotton shirting. I can't remember where I got this either. And this is 100% cotton woven and it's fairly thin and instead of putting the facing on, I lined it. And I fussed and fussed and fussed with this because princess seams lately are the bane of my existence. And I'm, you know, I keep trying to get them to fit and because they wanna gape right here. I wanna, and I'm always having to pinch out fabric because there's just too much right here. So, I took it apart, I fiddled with it, I took it apart again, I fiddled with it some more, and I finally got it to the place where I thought, all right, this is probably about as good as it's gonna get. I was only fiddling with this. I wasn't fiddling with the shoulder seam at all, and I probably should have done something there because I think I have a sloping shoulder, and uh, that's throwing all of this off. So I did finish it, and I had the pleasure of doing consistent easy buttonholes on my brand new baby. And uh, so it turned out okay. It, it's kind of, it wants to kind of just gape in the front. I'm not comfortable in it. I don't know how much I'll wear it, but it is kind of the perfect thing to throw on and go to a barbecue at the neighbor's house or, you know, go to a picnic or an outdoor concert or something like that. It's the perfect kind of thing for that because it's very cool. It's very um, light, it's a light fabric, it's very thin. And um, yeah, it's just easy to wear. So I don't know how much wear I will get out of it because that that thing in the front makes me, ugh, it just bugs me. But it's a good pattern and uh, I think it would suit a lot of body types. So new look, they're, they're great for this kind of thing. I think, you know what, if I were going to make this again, which I doubt I will, but I would probably make the UE, which has a little flutter sleeve and a little flutter collar. It's so cute. Then I finished up Simplicity 7086. This is a 
top that I talked about last week, but I gotta tell you, um, I thought I was making view C, which was the sleeveless version, and no, I made view B. I had forgotten that I cut the sleeve. I am terrible <laughs> at trying to ease in a sleeve because here's the thing. Most things in my life I am very lackadaisical about. You know, it's like, don't ever come to my house expecting for it to be spotlessly clean because I am not like that. When it comes to sewing, I am very fussy about it being right, about it matching up, about being in a straight line, you know, things like that. And I like precision in my sewing, but I am not a person who is good at that because the rest of my life isn't that way. And so I was talking to my friend Adam from Adam Sews the other day and I said, you know what, you quilters, all of you love that, that precision. So, you know, like a man's tailored dress shirt is perfect for you because it's got a collar stand and a collar and you gotta get the points right and the top stitching on the placket, it has to be right and the continuous lap on the cuff has to be perfect and he's great at that and he totally agreed with me. He goes, oh yes, I love that. But you know what, I don't doesn't matter because I got the cutest little button up front shirt. It's so cute. One more thing about that. I uh, had a subscriber who said, I have that fabric. And I said, where'd you get it? I'd love to have more of it. She said, I think I got it years ago at Joann's. And so I did a search for it. And I found out after going down a rabbit hole, long rabbit hole, that it was a print designed by a guy named, as an artist named Leon Rosenblatt. And apparently, I don't, I'm not even sure he's still alive. Uh, the last thing he did was in 2010, I think in California. And in the 1970s, mid 1970s, he was in New York and also in Miami, Florida, doing like album covers for different bands and other art kinds of things. But apparently at one point he did textile design and I don't, I, I couldn't find any information on that. Everything I found was kind of a dead end. And so you can Google it, him and it, and what you'll get are pieces of vintage fabric and they're pricey because they're collectible, but they're beautiful designs. I just, oh my gosh, I found one with poppies or roses or something. And oh, I just, it was perfect. I thought I love that. I want that piece of fabric, but it was pricey on Etsy. So, okay. So that's all the sewing. I had a little wonderful thing come this, this week in the mail. It was a little package from my friend Monty from Monty Sews. Monty was kind enough to find some vintage buttons and she sent them to all of her friends. It was funny. I didn't realize that. And still I saw the videos from these friends and they were all saying, Monty was so kind. She sent me all these little vintage buttons. So she sent a wonderful little card and she said, these buttons remind me of you. And so thank you, Monty, because I really love them all. I have some little firemen, little firemen donations. And she said, um, how did she say that? She said, some are for you, some are for your grandson. Hope you like them. Thank you so much, Monty. You know, I, I it's one thing to love the gift, but it's another thing to just love the fact that your sweet friend thought of you and wanted to, you know, bless you with something. I think that's, I, I think I appreciate that even more. I love the buttons, but I love you more, Marty. Marty from Marty Sews. Okay, let's talk about comments. Last week's question was, how do you feel about hand sewing? Do you love it or do you hate it? Or are you somewhere in between? Well, I tallied up the results. Most of you said you do like hand sewing. You, uh, you either love it or you feel like, well, you don't mind. And others of you said, well, like, I don't, it's not my first love. And then some said, absolutely not. Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. I'm in that contingent. So the score was uh, people that love it, yes. 22 of you said that. The people that hate it, 20 of you said that. I had to add it up here. 20 of you said that. So pretty even, really. So all these comments are about that. Okay, let's talk about 
the negatives first and end on a very positive note, shall we? Okay, so those in my, my uh, group who hate it, they said, well, Nancy Pollard says, when my grandson was three or four years old, he told me that he was allergic to pineapple. I said to my daughter, when did you find out Corbin was allergic to pineapple? She said, he's not allergic to pineapple. Why do you ask? Well, we figured out that he thought if you didn't like something, you were allergic to it. Long story short, I'm allergic to hand sewing. Isn't that funny? Oh gosh. Paula Matson said, when I think about hand sewing, and she has this whole string of emojis, just like, ew, no, ugh. Oh, it just cracks me up. So my answer is a big no. Right there with you. Norma Cooper says, uh, I don't do much hand sewing, but I probably could if I set my mind to it. It would take a while because my joints are not as cooperative as they used to be. Boy, that is fact of life, isn't it? For those of us that are getting older, I have trigger finger, so my hands get caught like this sometimes, and I can't get my, it's, it's like my middle and ring fingers, they won't let go to come up again. I know it's weird, but I spend a lot of my time stretching and doing this and doing a lot of this because I need my hands to sew, and so does Norma. And so, yeah, that's a really important consideration when, you, when you're sewing in general, or you know, you're cutting something out, or you're doing anything with your hands. You just gotta do whatever it's gonna take to get them working and keep them working as long as you can. Nancy Helpenstill says, hand sewing, no! <laughs> the only hand sewing I believe in is hand embroidery. If you're gonna take the time and the trouble to sew by hand, it should be something beautiful that you can show off. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. I fully support this opinion. Kes 44 p says, I don't wash dishes because I have a dishwasher. I don't hand sew because I have several sewing machines. My sewing machine even sews on buttons. Do you know, Mine, I think, will too, but I was too afraid to do it because I couldn't figure it out and get it lined up perfect and I didn't want to break a needle. But you know what? Yeah, good point. If you have a machine that does the thing, then why would you do it by hand unless you absolutely had to? Sometimes you can't get around it, but yeah, I'm right there with you. Verna KG says, hand sewing is a necessary evil. Mm-hmm. I was supposed to hand sew beads on my wedding dress. Fabric glue was my friend. <laughs> Girl, you know what? That is smart thinking because I bet there were a lot of beads that had to go on that dress. Super Kit says, I try not to hand sew anything, but occasionally I find I must do it with a large amount of grumbling. Nope, not for me, but much respect to those who do. I agree with that too. You know, if you love it, well, we'll get to the people that love it. And I, I do also have a huge respect for them. I just, not with them. Okay, positives. Let's talk a bit about the people that do love hand sewing. Kay Hop says, Jen, I learned just how to sew from my grandmother. So hand sewing was something she wanted me to know how to do. My first piece of advice from her was not to start out with a long piece of thread because it would become tangled and you would spend time undoing. Ha! If I can count the times that I've had a long piece of thread and I go to pull it through and it knots and you go and fiddle and fiddle and fiddle and you end up just snipping it off and trying it again. Uh, she would tell me in Danish, but the English translation is lazy tailors use long threads. Uh -huh. But good tailors use a piece of beeswax. You can tell I've got thread on there. A piece of beeswax or a piece of soap. I have pieces like bars of soap that have long <laughs> grooves in them where I've had to hand sew something and I've just taken my thread and you run it through there and it waxes it for you so that it doesn't want to stick together. And that does help, but she's right. Lazy tailors. I'm a lazy tailor. 
Susan Schaefer says, I'm a quilter, so I always keep a project in the car for long car trips. I realize it may take years for that quilt top to be completed, but I enjoy the business of hand sewing and the sense of accomplishment. My husband, my husband would love this too, loves that the project keeps my head down so I am not backseat driving. Win-win! Yeah, my husband would love that too. Uh -huh. Yeah, he would love for me to have my attention on anything else other than telling him how to drive, which I try not to do, but it's so hard. Mary Mary has something to say about hand sewing, but she has a very good story here. And she said, I once bought a new singer several years ago, an updated version of the one I had, very similar case. Well, I had to work one Saturday and my husband cleaned out our living area and organized my sewing area. Right there, you know there's gonna be trouble. Mm -hmm. Oh, there was. Unfortunately, my new sewing machine ended up at Goodwill, along with some fabric scraps and a sack of new material. Last time he was allowed to touch anything to do with sewing or anything belonging to me. Man, I would have been so hopping mad. Ooh. As far as hand sewing, I've joined the slow stitching movement and I love it. I've even sewed a lap size quilt and looking forward to doing to hand stitching a poncho. I find it relaxing and soothing while watching TV and YouTube videos. And I'm sure it helps when you think about that time your husband took your brand new machine to Goodwill. Oh my gosh, can you imagine? I would have lost my mind. Oh man, Lori Overman says, uh, I have sewn for many years, 56 years to be exact, and I really enjoy hand sewing. It is so relaxing for me to pick up a needle and thread plus thimble. When I started sewing, I can't say that I liked it, but I sure do now. When I'm judging 4-H sewing projects, you are a judge for 4-H? How cool is that? And when I see the hand sewing on the project, I always ask if they like the hand sewing. Oh man, can you imagine being a kid and the judge is asking you, so did you like the hand sewing? Uh, man, I would have been deer in the headlights. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what do I say? It's the judge. I'm sure she gets a fair amount of that. <laughs> she says some are hesitant to give me their true feelings and some say right away their opinion. It is so fun to hear the answers. You know what, I bet you are the kind of judge that is so affable and says, so tell me, did you like the hand sewing? I hope that you're that way. In fact, I'm pretty convinced that you are. You wouldn't have told us that story. Mary Lou W2946. Mary Lou, we'll just call you Mary Lou W. She says, I love to sew by hand. Slow stitching, sitting on the deck is my favorite thing to do. I also love to cross stitch or crochet. I always need to keep my hands busy. You know what, if I were going to hand sew and do it somewhere, it would be in church so I could keep my hands busy. I just feel like I always need to be doing something with my hands. Isn't that funny? The way that you feel like you need to do that, but there are all kinds of ways, wonderful ways that we as sewers can do that. And you know what? Mary Lou, I think you're onto something. Cynthia Lindsley says, congratulations on the new machine. Hand sewing. I love the feel of a needle in my hand. Like kneading bread, the physical touch is something very meditative. Meditative. Unfortunately, my hands can no longer tolerate it, but that's why God blessed me with a faff creative icon. Yep. Well, you know, even if you can do a little bit, I hope you can do that much, Cynthia, because, you know, I know this probably gives you many hours of sewing enjoyment. Robin Duggan says, I do hand sewing when I'm doing a small repair, but I've been super curious about doing a full garment by hand. Robin, honey, are you out of your mind? Why? Why? Okay, probably because it's something you are challenged by. And you know, it's like, why does anybody climb Mount Everest? Why? Totally respect your wanting to do that though. 
She says, the only reason I haven't tried it yet is one, choosing a project. <laughs> yeah. And two, I have cataracts in the in one eye and seeing well enough to get a straight line is challenging right now. Maybe after surgery, or I could use a friction pen to mark my seam allowance so I can see it. You know what? Now, to get more serious here, um, I agree. There are so many times that I cannot see. I just can't see. I need, I'm wearing contacts right now, and these are fairly strong. And I still have glasses that are magnifiers, and they're not like zero or 0.5. They're like 3.5, and I put them on because I cannot see what I'm doing. And I think that's that's just really important as we age, or even if you just have always had, you know, eyes that weren't great. My daughter has eyes that aren't great. My mom, my brother, my sister all have eyes that weren't great. So, you know, you're right. I hope you can have surgery and that that can clear that up. But that's a real consideration, yeah. And anything that you can do to make it show up so you can see what you're doing, that's so critically important. I know a lot of people have those lights or um, like a magnifier glass, like it's it's like a lamp, but it, um, it pulls over and you can put whatever you're working on under it. I have <laughs> this little magnifying glass right here that, um, if I don't want to put my glasses on or it's not that important a thing, I don't really need to focus, then I'll use that. But mm -hmm. it, we just get to an age where we need that. Or, you know, maybe we're not an age where we need it. Maybe we just don't have great eyesight. So, Light. Light helps a lot too, I find. Pamela Fisher says, I do enjoy hand sewing, especially hand sewing the binding on the back of a quilt. That's the last step in making that quilt and it takes no concentration. So I use that time to pray for the person I'm giving it to. Isn't that wonderful? Just taking the time to think about them and to remind God, you know, this person needs this, that, or the other thing, or I don't even know what they need, Lord, but you know what they need. I just think, ah, oh, that is such a precious thing to be doing well, and a smart thing to be doing since prayer is the, probably the most important thing that you can do for another person who is in need. If it is for someone I know, then I know I can enjoy the memories I have of them. It's just an enjoyable, quiet time that I feel blessed to have. Definitely. You are definitely so wise to have taken that moment right then to use it for that thing. Lisa Ann Spencer says, I enjoy hand sewing because it forces me to take a break. You know, sometimes we do just need to take a break. Now for me, taking a break and doing hand sewing is kind of like an oxymoron. It's like a paradoxical thing. Yeah, but it does make you slow down, doesn't it? I sewed buttons on this week. I sewed all the buttons on that little camp shirt and all the buttons on that vest and you know, I just thought, well, I'll just hand sew them. And it did make me slow down and take some time. I did not enjoy it, but I did it anyway. And then finally, Dinah Thornton says, I'm both a quilter and a garment sewer. Strangely enough, I love to hand quilt and hand sew the back of my quilt bindings, but I hate hemming and hand sewing on garments. Strange, huh? I don't know. I don't think so. I think, you know, the one thing you associate with something and then the other thing you associate with something else. And so, you know, hate doing one. I mean, quilting is all straight lines. So I know you can do curved lines too, but you know what I mean? It's all straight lines. Like when you're doing sashing or you're doing a binding or something like that, it's, uh, it's not a hem that you have to work on not puckering or not getting to like fold or anything like that. Yeah, it's, that's different. So, no, I'm not surprised by that at all. Okay, that's all the comments for this week. And thank you all for weighing in and letting me know. It was nice to know that uh, some of you really do feel like I do. And others of you have such great reasons for liking it so much. So, okay, this week's uh, question is, what is the worst garment to sew for you? What is your thing that is the absolute worst? absolute worst. Gosh, I don't know. I just don't know. I think I'll get back to you next week on this one because I, I really do need to think about it at length. 
the worst thing to sew, the thing I dread doing that I don't want to do or that I don't do because I don't like it. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. So I'll get back to you next week. Well, that's it for Friday Sews this week, and I will leave you with my little prayer card. This one says, from Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. You know what? I, I had a conversation with a subscriber who told me about something horrific that happened to her, happened in her family. And I told her, I don't even know what to tell you. I, where are the words in a time like this? What do I say to you that will help you? And I didn't want to get all preachy or Jesus with her or anything like that because I thought that's not what she needs right now. God knows what she needs. So the most important thing I could do for her was to pray for her, to stand in the gap for her. But also I knew that when we come to God, to Jesus and we cry out because we are in such pain and need that he will take that and he will say let me handle that you just rest you just take time oh, my goodness there have been times in my life where I don't know what I would have done had I not had that it is a beautiful wonderful thing I hope you have that too and I will leave you with that. Anytime you want to see one of my videos, just check right over here because that's where they are at the end. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a great weekend.